So it was the fourth day of emergency in the Maldives, but the government, led by President Yameen, continues to insist that it is business as usual in the country. Now, in a statement, the government has extended an invitation to its international partners to visit the Maldives. Now, Yameen government has said that no curfew has been imposed and the general movement of people, services and businesses will not be affected in the forthcoming days. It also insists that tourism, which is the largest industry in Maldives and accounts for about 28% of the country's GDP, has not been affected at all by the state of emergency that was declared by Abdullah Yameen. Now, many see this statement as nothing more than a move to counter the travel advisories that have been issued by several countries to their citizens against visiting Mali unless absolutely essential. But as many as 20 constitutional rights of citizens have been suspended and the situation on the ground still remains extremely tense. Now, former President Mamoun Gayoum still remains under arrest and according to some reports, he's presently on a hunger strike. Now, the police have said that they are investigating attempts allegedly by opposition leaders to topple the Yameen government. Now, they say that Gayoum was arrested for allegedly trying to bribe lawmakers. Meanwhile, former President Mohammed Nasheed continues to call on India for its support in trying to resolve the crisis in Maldives. Now, in a tweet, Nasheed has said, and I quote, Maldivians see India's role positively in 1988. They came resolved the crisis and left. They were not occupiers, but liberators. This is why Maldivians look to India now. now. The former president, who has been in exile since at least 2015 in Sri Lanka, wants a military intervention from India. But China, which is another prominent player in the Maldives, has warned against it. If we can't stop... <laughs> 尽快恢复国家的稳定和社会安定。我想我们呼吁的是有关的各方。同时，我们也相信马尔代夫的政府、政党和人民有智慧、有能力，能够自主的应对目前的状况。All right, so that is the Chinese position where they've said that what is happening in Maldives should be treated as its internal matter. And also in an open editorial in a Chinese government mouthpiece called Global Times, Beijing has tried to sermonize India, saying that political struggles are just supposed to be internal matters. The Chinese mouthpiece said, and I quote, political struggles are supposed to be internal affairs and New Delhi has no justification to try and intervene in Malay's affairs. Now, the Maldivian sovereignty should be respected and the political unrest should be left to the Maldivian people to address. Now, the Chinese mouthpiece has also accused India of having a desire to control South Asian nations. India has already cautiously reacted to the developments in Mali and has urged all sides to abide by the country's Supreme Court order to release all political prisoners in the spirit of democracy. Now, China has been investing heavily in the Maldives mainly due to the Belt and Road Initiative. The Maldives holds the key to unlock the Indian Ocean region for this project. China has already taken control of the Hambantota port in Sri Lanka and Djibouti in the Horn of Africa. The Maldives connects Bangladesh and Sri Lanka to the east to Pakistan and Djibouti in the west, enabling the string of pearls route around the Indian subcontinent.